Hello, my gorgeous ones. Welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia. Here on my channel, I love affordable fashion and beauty. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around, subscribe, be a friend. And today I have another collab that I'm really, really excited to do with two absolutely stunning friends of mine. We have Heather, who is Crazy Beautiful Makeup. And then we have Steph, Stephanie, who is Steph's Beauty Stash. And what we are doing today is we are coming together as three women now in our 40s. I am 40 and re just recently 40. And Heather and Steph are 41. And we are going to kind of like encourage you guys for one of embracing 40 if you're already in your 40s of course you can be even older than that and just feel good about it and then if you maybe you're approaching 40 and you're a little bit nervous about it you know I just my goal is to tell you guys like it's actually pretty fabulous one it's a mindset that makes you if you feel good you look good um and then also there's products out there that I feel have come a really long way way to help you look your best in your 40s. I truly, truly think that 40s is like where you start to hit your prime for so many things, for beauty, for self-confidence, for just feeling grounded in your soul and in your life. And so I'm just going to talk a bit about that while I share all of my products that make me feel beautiful at 40. Right. One of them I just used, <laughs> I put it in my eyeball just now. I actually know that Heather swears by these too. These are the Lumify drops. They are often recommended by eye doctors to be safe for the eyes. You guys, I have hereditary red, red, red eyes for one. Also, I live in West Texas where there's constantly dirt in the air and my eyes are bloodshot red all the time. And I always felt like when my eyes looked so red, I felt like I looked older because um, I just looked worn out. And whenever I tried these, it was the most clear my eyes had ever been. Of course, it doesn't work all day long for me. The red's going to come back. But for like a moment or for a moment, for a couple of hours, I just look bright, awake, my eyes are clear. And it was like shocking to me how good it, how well it works. So that is my first product that I recommend. Like if you're having trouble with just like red eyes and you feel like it drags you down, makes you look older, I would recommend those. Um, something else that I've really recently gotten into that I neglected my whole life pretty much is just more like my body care. So like I've always been into lotions. I love the Bath and Body Works body creams. Those hydrate my skin the best of anything else. Um, but I've really gotten into things like body scrubs and then here recently, body oils. I love, like, I don't know why I didn't embrace these before. I have two right here and a lot of these products I'm going to show you. It's not necessarily specifically the brand. Some of them it is, but, um, it's just to give you examples. So these are actually like an example of a high end and then a lower end here, but this specific, the cap did fall off of this. So this is their vegan collagen body oil, has sunflower, avocado oil, um, and barrage oil. And then this one by Mara, oh my gosh, this is so luxurious. <laughs> like it is pricey. Um, I got this from Skeepers and PR, but this is the Sea Sculpt Body Oil. It has algae, moringa, um, I think it has kelp. It has all sorts of fun things from the sea. This one's truly like a spa-like experience. Like if you want to be pampered, you use something like this. It smells just like you're in this fancy spa and they've got all these ingredients that they just went out and like excavated from the sea. <laughs> but both of these have really just made my skin feel just more alive, like look brighter, not so dull, softer. And I do this before I put on my lotion now. So these are body oils or something that I have just recently added in that is making a difference for me. Now skin, let's talk skin like, okay, one just I still get acne. Okay. I just turned 40. I still get acne, primarily hormonal acne. So I am currently in that fun time of the month. And this happens 
the week before and then during. So like, it's just going to happen. It's just life. But overall skin, I have found skincare makes just such a huge, huge difference. I didn't truly get into skincare until really until my mid thirties. I mean, yes, I used a moisturizer my whole life and maybe an eye cream, but like, Oh my gosh, adding other skincare in really makes a big difference. Finally found toners that worked for me. I should have brought one over here, but there's a CosRx toner that I love. Very, very hydrating. I love the Glow Recipe toner. Those are excellent. But the thing that has made such a big difference, two things for me. One for acne is this Amy Matthews Clarifying Tea Tree Oil. So this has spearmint and tea tree oil. And I use it sparingly because if I'm not broken out, there's really no reason for me to use this other than it is very hydrating and it does give a beautiful glow to the skin. But it works so well on acne that I reserve it four times like this when I'm broken out. And it really helps calm the flare up for one, it kind of stops it from just getting completely out of control and it reduces the size. I don't usually get giant whiteheads anymore because of using this. I love it so, so, so much, but the snail mucin. So many of you guys already know about it, but I'm often surprised when people say they still haven't tried this. You just need to, if you are freaked out that this has snail slime in it, get over it. Who cares. There's all sorts of stuff in our food, in products that we use that we probably don't realize is there. So just get over it. The snail mucin is magical. It's so hydrating. It does help with acne. It helps with fine lines. It's brightening. It's just like a little miracle essence. I love it so much. And skincare in general, just truly transformed. I mean, there's moisturizers I love. I do recommend using eye creams, but Really serums and toners has been what has made such a big difference for my now 40 year old skin. All right, now let's talk SPF. So I am one of those guilty that I didn't really embrace SPF until the last maybe two years. And one day that probably will catch up to me. I know Heather, she lives in Florida. Steph is in Houston and Heather is like a, an SPF, like drill, drill sergeant. Like she's like, even in the shade, I'm wearing a hat and I'm wearing SPF. And so she was probably like, girl, how did you just the last two years? There are so many that I love. I love a lot of K-Beauty ones. D'Alba is a good one. I love my Kinship one. The Elf one, the Glow. I really, really love that one. Here recently, though, I have fallen in love with this Shiseido Expert Sun Protector SPF 50, the Synchro Shield. One, this bottle is really big. This is pricier for an SPF. I think it's around 50 bucks or something like that. But you can get it at Ulta and then, you know, I'm sure they have sales on it sometimes. And then if you use points, a coupon, then you could really probably get this pretty inexpensively. A little bit goes a long way. The smell of this is so beautiful. And I just feel like it really brightens my skin and protects my skin at the same time. And now that I have found SPFs that do other things besides smelling like sunscreen and leaving a white cast. Now that I find ones that have like skincare benefits and actually give an extra glow to my skin, I love it. Like I'm gonna use it whether it's sunny or not. I'm gonna use it in the winter like I should have always been. So, so good. All right, then priming the skin. So. I really started to realize that primers for me make a huge difference. It's bonkers to me that some people say primers, you don't need them. Foundations go on the same. Like that is simply not true when it comes to me anyway. A primer makes all the difference in the world. So, so many foundations that people say don't work for them. I kind of wonder like, how did you prep? Did you use a good primer? Did you use a high, if it's a really drying foundation, did you use a really moisturizing, hydrating primer? So here's an example of one that I love. I've talked about it before, but I have tons that I love. And I have a new one from Lancome that I'm really loving right now. But since it's so new to me, I thought I would just use an oldie but goodie. This is the Milani Supercharged Dewy Primer. It is affordable. It is 
so hydrating on the skin. It gives a beautiful glow. And I feel like my foundations go on so much better on top of this. But before I do that, here is a little mixture that I love. So we have the All Over Glow from Believe Beauty, but anything like this. So like the e.l.f. one, um, these are those like liquid highlighters basically, but that don't have like chunks of glitter. And then mixing it in with the, this is the B Goldie, yes, B Goldie Bright Drops from Drunk Elephant. I've been loving. These are expensive, not a ton of product in here, but a little, like you need two drops. Mix it in with this, put this on over the primer, and like the skin is already glowing. It is ready for your foundation to go on. A lot of times I do get comments on my skin and looking glowing, and I'm like, you guys, my skin without makeup and without all the products is problematic still. Like I still get acne. I have discoloration. It is a lot better because of a lot of the skincare that I use. But the reason why my skin can look a lot more flawless in the glow is these things I put on before my foundation. And you know, at 40, like I want my skin to look healthy. I want it to glow. I don't want to look like, I don't want to put on tons of matte makeup to try to cover up wrinkles. Like I want my skin to be able to breathe and just have that beautiful glow. So those are some of my tricks for how I get more flawless looking skin when it's not. Now, another thing that I have fallen in love with, it's kind of become, not a trick, but I also do, it probably sounds like a lot of steps, but hey, it doesn't feel like a lot of steps to me and it doesn't look like a lot of steps. Um, but I am obsessed with this Hourglass um, Veil, the Hydrating Skin Tint. And what I will do is I will put just a little bit, like I'm talking just not even dime size, and I will put that on with my fingers, not a brush, not a sponge, just with my fingers, and it just melts into the skin. And I feel like it gives you a little bit more coverage that way for one, but there's just something about the way it distributes and looks on the skin when you use the fingers. Before I go in with my actual foundation, and here it is. Now I've got tons of foundations I love, and I was like, which one do I show? But here lately, my go-to, like what I've been wearing when I turned 40, my birthday party pictures being taken, was doing all those steps and then this, a really good foundation by Kimchi Beauty. That's what it's called, a really good foundation. My shade is perfect for me. It is 112M. This is a stunning foundation that is affordable. I think it's around $20, $25 and it is so natural looking, gives great coverage, a little bit of a glow, but not dewy, not greasy. So it's definitely not a matte foundation. I do think that oily skin could do this. You just have to prep a little bit differently. If you're oily skin, then do more of a mattifying primer, and then you could use a foundation like this, and I think it would look really natural and really beautiful. So those are some of kind of like the the tricks to how I get my skin to look good. Something I left out is also masking. I'm really, really into masking. I love sheet masks, but I've really been enjoying a few by Clarins. This is the Cryo Flash Cream Mask. You guys, this is so crazy. It is bonkers. It like is so cooling on the skin, but then after you wash it off, anything you put on on top of that after, like, your serums, your moisturizer, your even your foundation, it like reactivates whatever all they put in this and you get the cooling sensation with each thing that you put on your skin. It is so amazing and I do think it is helping with like irritation on my skin. This is for drier skin girls. So masking, I say, I forget sometimes. I'll get in a rut where I don't do it, but it's a step you really shouldn't skip. Now something kind of inside out I wanted to talk about. I'm pretty sure Heather uses this too. This is the Vital Proteins College Peptides. This is one of those things that like, I feel like it works. Like I've been using it for years. I mean, I have nice hair. My nails, if I'm not always putting on press-ons, they're pretty sturdy. 
I do feel like my skin got a little bit more glowy when I started using this. So like, I'm almost positive that it does work. And because I think that, I've been using it for years. So you can get it at Walmart. Um, I think Sam's Costco, maybe like the cheapest way to get it. But I do recommend that. Okay, something else, cream products. As you age, skin gets a little bit drier, older, you know, cream products are really, really great. I still love powder products, still use powder brush, brushes, blushes, bronzers, all that, but love me some cream bronzers. Now, I just brought two over. I've got lots that I like, but I am almost completely empty of this e.l.f. one. Um, I think it works great. This is Golden Days. It really stays put. Love it. And then also, I like this LYS Beauty, the stick. Really love that one. But honestly, any cream bronzer that really works, I, I do my nose. My nose is actually pretty broad. And that's something like contouring and playing with face shape has also really helped me a lot. I think it really helps to find like cheekbones. Um, I do have a large forehead. I've talked about that before. It is what it is. I've embraced it, but I do like to contour it to give the illusion that's not as big as it is. And then the nose. I just think it really made a difference in my beauty game. And I didn't really figure out all that until mid thirties. And I feel like I look back at all the older pictures and I'm like, I look better now. Like I feel like I look so much better now at 40 because I know how to apply my makeup better than I did at 20 and even at 30. So a lot of it is just application truly. Now I do also love cream blushes. I brought out just a couple and pretty much everything I've shown you guys I have on today, but we have this one. I think these are so underrated. This is the Soft Matte Cream Blush by LA Girl. So, so good. And then this Believe Beauty, I will finish this not too long. This is Dollface. And I actually did a combination. I did this one here first and then I kind of ombre into the Dollface. But I just think that they give such a pretty healthy coloring to the cheeks instead of just only doing powder. And then this is the um, Blush Balm uh, Bubbly by Flower Beauty. I also love this one, but I've got tons of cream blushes. Just wanted to show you guys a few. Now, next, oh, let's see, I missed this, is concealer. Obviously, concealer is a best friend once you start to age, even, not even just when you age, but um, at 40, you know, if you're drier under the eyes, you're not going to want that, like, shape tape. I know some people still love it, but it is so drying and so cakey on me. I don't care if it has really good coverage. I don't want lines creasing all under my eyes. And for me, I like a lot of concealers a lot but the Rare Beauty has been a love for me. It is creamy and it has good coverage. It doesn't crease on me. Um, so this has been one of my absolute favorites. Now highlighter, I still love a highlighter. Um, I, I mean, I love a glow and I don't mind if it's beaming. I don't want it to show texture, of course. And I love a loose highlighter. I feel like that's not a popular opinion, but for me, if it's really finely milled, I just think it looks so much prettier on. I feel like when they're pressed, and I've got pressed ones that I love, like the Rare Beauty, but um, they could just get chalkier to me or dry out easier. These by um, Silk Naturals, I've talked about them a bunch, are absolute favorites of mine. They look tiny, but I mean, I've had these for gosh, maybe nine months or more. And they're still about halfway full. And I use them all the time. I love them so much. They are so beautiful. I have them on today. I mean, I use them forehead, the nose, the cheeks. They're stunning. Another one though that I do love is just the Wet n Wild. I have all four shades. And for me, if I use like a fan brush and I put it in the cap and then I really kind of press it in, that's how it really crushes it down for me and just gives that beautiful glow. Now, this is my favorite all time setting spray or just final final step is the Lumi Shake and Glow Mist from L'Oreal. 
I've also talked about this product a million times and I've said that most of the time when people compliment the glow to my skin, this is what I have on top. It is not sparkly. It just is so glowy and the mister is perfect. I love it so, so much. So like for me, skin glowing and that is so important at 40. Now, I do still also love to do the eyes, you know, like I know some people when they hit 40, they think that you can't do as much fun eyeshadow looks and like, yes, you can. You can do whatever you want. You can wear a multi-crumbs till you're 80. But for me specifically today to show something that makes me feel really beautiful at 40, I love green. I love green and then I love like a pop of pink in there. I just feel like... It's a way, especially these tones of green, like kind of your more grungy, murky green. I feel like it's really, really flattering. So I did use the Muse palette. So I love a grungy color story. And I here lately, I love a mixture between earthy tones and neutrals with pops of color. I just feel like that's the most, I still do really fun, really bright makeup sometimes, but when I really wanna feel pretty, it is like earthy tones with maybe like a pop of pink in there. I just, I think it's classy. I think it's beautiful. So I recommend that if you, um, if you don't think you can do eyeshadow at 40, I recommend trying that. And I do still love to do a wing. I mean, occasionally I will not, but for me, a lot of people think that I have really, they're like, oh, you have such big eyes and they're not, they are not big. It is an illusion. Wings definitely help elongate and make them look bigger than they are. So that's one of my tricks. I also highly recommend on the lower lash line, instead of doing like a stark white, using a cream, a beige, or one of my favorites is like a pearly light pink. This one from Beauty For Real is a favorite of mine. I have it under here today, and it really just opens the eye, makes it appear bigger. So I highly recommend doing that. Now, eyebrows have also been a huge game changer for me. I mean, I look back before I really did my brows, I'm like, wow, like the shape can really, really change your face. And you have to do what works best for you. I tried for a while doing the thick, bigger eyebrows and I thought maybe it looked good. I look back and I'm like, I looked ridiculous. Like this is the most flattering for my face is a thinner brow and I use a brow pencil. I feel like a little arch here just works best with my face shape. This is my Holy Grail, the Lottie London Arch Rival. Absolute Holy Grail for me. Very, very affordable, but if you have been neglecting your eyebrows or you don't do them, or like maybe if you think you should try something different, just see how it changes your face shape, how it frames your eyes. Before I did this, I feel like my eyes didn't stand out as much. And now I would never go back to not doing them like this. All right, now lips. There's a lot of lip products that feel beautiful. It was kind of hard for me to narrow it down. I mean, I love a bold red lip will always be gorgeous. I just chose more of a nude because it just goes with everything. Like you can do your bold eye and it, you know, doesn't compete and you can do your nude lip or you can even, you know, do a subtle eye. Actually, I think a subtle eye with a bold lip is actually stunning. But just for today, I really still love a liner. I, I recommend a liner. Not I don't overline. The thing is, is I have kind of uneven lips and then I have like pigment that fades, but like the lips still there, like it's still my lip. And before I did liner, I would miss that faded part. And I was really kind of robbing myself of my full lip. So a liner really helps me get those spots. And so I love this brown liner from Kimchi Beauty. And then just doing like a little bit lighter contrast with the shade. So this is the Lunar Beauty in the shade Icon. I love doing a liner, a matte lip, and then adding a gloss. It's hard to just stick with the matte lip because it does dry out, but I just feel like it looks the best. I think it's just the most stunning. I do sometimes just love a sparkly gloss too, but my favorite favorite is doing matte lipstick and then a gloss 
and especially a plumping gloss. So just to get the full maximum amount out of the lips as possible. And this one's the Buxom um, Plumping Gloss in Abigail. I have tons of glosses I love, but I just chose this one today. And I just think it's nice and juicy and pouty. And I, I look back at older pictures and I'm like, I felt like I looked older with these thinner lips. And, you know, I didn't get lip fillers or anything like that. It's just, I was like, oh, I was missing so much of my lip. Like, how was I missing that? So I highly recommend doing that. Now, lastly, I think this is last, last fragrance. So if you've seen some of my more recent videos, I'm getting... I'm falling in love with fragrance. I've always loved perfume. Like I own perfumes I have forever. I had a nice collection, but here lately, like it's truly what I'm passionate about. So what I'm most excited about is what I want to spend my money on. And like, I feel beautiful whenever I smell good. I am someone who will spray before I go to bed. I, when I want to feel in a certain mood, I'll put on a certain fragrance. And I really love all kinds. I just have three right here to show you. I've got a bunch of the Ariana Grandes back there, plus some other brands. But, um, so I, if I'm going to do say a designer, I'm not as much into designer fragrances anymore. I'm more into niche fragrances, but this is a new bottle to me, but an older fragrance. This is, well, not super old. I think it's about seven years old. This is the Paco Rabanne Pure Excess. Number one, like the bottle's stunning with this snake, but this is a very sexy, um, wintry fall evening type of scent. It has Lang Lang and it has some coconut musk. It has a popcorn note that I, that they say is there that I do not get. I don't smell that has amber. This is very warm, very sensual. So like if I want to be in that kind of a mood, that's what I would wear. Now this indigo, I'm wearing this today. This is by Ness. This is one of my favorites. This is so good. This is a tea and fig um, fragrance and it has lemon. And so it is a floral, but it is like spicy and unique. And I just absolutely love it. And I feel like this one's appropriate daytime, nighttime all year round. And then another one, this is a newer one that I was recommended by my friend, Sarah. Um, this is the Marfa by Memo Paris. And this is one that took me a minute. I didn't love it at first, but that's the other beauty of fragrance is like, it can like grow on you. It's like, it can almost court you <laughs> like someone that wants to date you, you know? And this is a floral it is dry, dry tuberose. This is supposed to be like desert florals. So it is very like dry but it's light and like feminine. It's really, really, really beautiful. So those are just a few. I plan on talking a lot more about fragrance on my channel. So I'm re really, really excited to share that with you guys. Um, just some final notes. I mean, number one, definitely go watch, you know, my friends videos, go watch Steph and Heather. I will have them linked and they are beautiful. Like they, one reason why I wanted to do this with them is they both have confidence. They both are secure in who they are. They're not the type that are like, oh, I can't wear this. I can't do this because I'm 40. Like they're still fun and they're youthful and they'll try different things. They're, you know, like Heather is more into like pinks and she loves like neutrals too. And she loves, you know, like some of your higher end makeup products, but she's still like fun and vibrant. And then Steph is like the indie eyeshadow queen. She tries them all out, but not just indie. She tries out everything and she does really beautiful, colorful looks. Like she's more of a colorful makeup girl. And I mean, both are very supportive. Both are very encouraging. And I just, at this stage in my life, definitely want to surround myself with women who, you know, aren't afraid to tell another woman that they're beautiful and who, you know, can also be honest and raw and say, hey, these are the things that I struggle with that I'm insecure about, but here's the things I love about myself. That's so important at this stage of life. And I've just, I've come to a place where I love everything about myself. Even, you know, there's things I'm like, oh, but you know what, but it's me. You know, like, like the forehead, like that I still get some acne, but like, I 
think I look amazing at 40. I, I feel good. I'm, I'm happy. I know who I am. Like I'm not trying to please anybody else. I do things for myself. And you know, when you get to that stage too, like you can really pour love on other people. You know, if you're secure in yourself, then more compliments will flow out of you towards other people. And that's one way that I know that I've really come to a place of self-love, self-acceptance and like 40 got me there. Like 40 is not anything to be afraid of. It's something to be excited about and to embrace. So I just encourage you guys, if anyone's worried about that, like it gets, it gets really amazing at 40. And I just thank my friends for doing this video for me, for me, with me. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.